that while our world has been obsessed with inflation over the last five to ten years, the extraordinary thing is that our world, on the whole, has had almost zero inflation. We've been chasing inflation targets in my country of around two or three percent. For over a decade now, I've been saying that I thought that was hazardous. Why? Because stuff happens. When stuff happens, it can affect our multiple, joined up, globalized world in all kinds of unexpected ways. And when you get combinations of things that happen, they can hit nations very hard and very suddenly. And if, when stuff happens, it knocks two or three percent off your inflation rate, then suddenly you're going from growth into recession. Suddenly you're going from a time where assets are roughly in, uh, stable or increasing in price to a horrible world where someone's house price is falling in relation to their debt, someone's offices that they own is falling in relation to the value of the business, and the, and the whole of the financial mechanisms of our world start to come into question. So deflation is such a ghastly environment for any government to manage that it seemed obvious to me, and it still seems even more obvious now, that to chase an inflation target of only 2% is risky because you cannot deal with shocks. And so then what happens is you start uh, finding yourself managing on the edge of deflation. And that is why we are seeing around the world official targets and unofficial ones. And in my country, certainly, it's not acknowledged, but the fact of the matter is there's an unofficial inflation target which is now significantly higher. Which is why, in my country, we've been hitting inflation of 3%. They didn't raise interest rates from 05 4%, they didn't raise inflation rates from 0.5. 5%, we still haven't shifted our, our, our interest, sorry, our interest rates have remained steady. Why? Why have they done that? Because they are worried that there are still some big shocks in the system, that we are still vulnerable, and the one living nightmare that they have is a deflationary period. So what does that mean for you guys? Well, you can interpret that into your own environment. But I guarantee this, our world is not going to risk deflationary shocks and there are plenty more of them around. Um, what happens, for example, just in my country, if Greece does get kicked out of the euro mechanism, what would have happened if Greece had decided not to approve their plan for austerity? And by the way, they have to go on redoing this every three months. And every three months, there are more rats on the streets. What would have happened if Greece had had a catastrophic sudden default on its debt instead of a managed exit from the EU, a Eurozone, which is much more likely now? The answer is that we would have had all kinds of chaos already in the last few days going through the European markets. Would it matter to Australia? Yes, it might. Our banks in my country have very little exposure to Greek debt, but unfortunately nobody knows where the Greek debt actually lands up. It's just like the Lehman crisis. It could take another year to be sure where that Greek debt is actually held. A lot of it in German banks, who are reassured in Hong Kong banks, who have securities shared with Chinese banks, with ripple implications into Australian banks. We live in an uncertain world, as I say. That is why you will find governments are erring on the side of a slightly higher target for inflation. 